Hello and welcome to this final part in my series, Jesus and Religion. And my subject is Jesus and Truth. What is truth? That's a very big question. It's been asked many times and by many people over many millennia of human history. Let's start with a slightly different question. What is true? We can easily answer, if it corresponds to reality, then it's true. For example, the question, is the milk in the fridge? The answer is either yes or no. And if the milk is actually in the fridge, then the answer yes would be true. And if the milk is in the fridge, then it's not on the table. That truth is exclusive. It includes only that which is factual, that which corresponds to reality, and it excludes every other claim to truth about where the milk is. If someone says the milk is on the table, but actually it's in the fridge, then they are mistaken. They are wrong. But if you ask, is the fridge real? What I see before me, or I think I see before me, does it actually exist? You would be asking a very different kind of question. You'd be asking a question that has to do with the relationship between perception and reality, which actually leads you to think about the nature of ultimate reality itself. So the question, what is truth, as opposed to what is true, is hinting at ultimate truth and ultimate reality. For ultimate truth will obviously correspond to ultimate reality. For Christians, God is the ultimate reality, the eternal self-existent one. So when Jesus says in John's Gospel, chapter 14 and verse 6, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. He is making a very big claim, one that cannot simply be ignored. Either he is speaking the truth or he is not. And if he's telling the truth, then he's also claiming to be not just a prophet, a religious teacher, a moral guide or a social reformer. He's claiming to be God, the Son of God, to be precise, alongside God the Father. This truth claim is also a narrow and exclusive one. But as we have seen, truth is narrow. It includes some things and excludes other things. So if Jesus claims to be the truth, then he's also claiming that every statement that contradicts this claim that he is the truth is wrong, not true. That would obviously apply to the truth claims made by other religions. According to Jesus, every religious belief that does not recognize that Jesus is the truth is not a belief that can be upheld as true. It does not correspond to ultimate reality. Before we examine any truth claim, it's important to determine, is there such a thing as truth? Does truth exist? This is not the same as asking, are some things true and other things false? But is there such a thing as absolute truth? Does truth exist at a level which gives meaning to all things? Once in a discussion about truth and religious belief, my friend once made this categorical statement. There's no such thing as truth, he said. I asked him, well, is, is that statement true? Absolutely, he replied. Can you see how self-defeating such statements are? If the statement, there's no such thing as truth, is true, then there is such a thing as truth. The person has just made the claim that his statement is true. Therefore, by his own admission, truth does exist after all. Others like to argue that truth is a matter of perspective and there can be as many different truths as there are different perspectives. You've heard these kind of statements, I'm sure. You have your truth, I have my truth, or that's just your truth. Such statements are confused and muddled. 
If something is true, for example, the statement God exists, then it is true for all people of all time, whether they believe it or not. Truth is not simply what I perceive or believe or what you perceive or believe. Truth is what actually is, what corresponds to actual reality. And it is true, whatever perspective you have on it or whatever you choose to believe about it. I've often heard a story told to show that different and seemingly contradictory religious beliefs are all true. The example of three blind men meeting an elephant for the first time. One grabs hold of the tail and says, it's a rope. Another places two hands on the side of the elephant and says, it's a wall. And the other blind man wraps his arms around the elephant's leg and says, it's a tree trunk. Now it's understandable why they all came to their conclusions, but they were all wrong. It's not a rope, it's not a wall, it's not a tree trunk, it's an elephant. That's why you have to have an idea of the bigger picture, the whole picture, ultimate reality. Otherwise, your perception will not only be partial, it will also be wrong. How can I know the truth? That's a good question. Philosophers and scientists often speak about two main ways of knowing whether something is true, reason and experience. Reason will give you access to certain truths. Mathematical truths can be demonstrated by reason. For example, two plus two equals four. You can demonstrate that by simple logic. Observation or experience can also give you reliable information. This is the basis of experimental science. These two ways of gaining knowledge are reliable and have been responsible for many wonderful discoveries, inventions and scientific advancements. These ways of knowing are also helpful in religious matters. They may not take us all the way to complete faith or trust in God, but they can take us a distance. For example, we can examine the evidence for God, for the Bible, for Christ himself, by applying our reason and looking to our religious experiences. There are many reasons for believing that God exists, that the Bible is true, and that Jesus is all he claims to be. Faith is not believing where there is no evidence, as some people seem to think. Faith is reasonable. But faith is more than arriving at a conclusion that is coherent with and consistent with facts. Faith also includes trust. It's about being persuaded of what is the truth and being prepared to commit one's whole life to that truth. And this can only happen when the reality of God and of Jesus reaches your heart by revelation. It's the Holy Spirit who reveals these things personally to all who are hungry for spiritual truth and knowledge those who want to know, who want to find God. Christians believe that the height or fullness of God's revelation is in Christ. This is expressed in the testimony of the Apostle John to the truth of Jesus. The only one who is at the Father's side, he has made him known. He was, of course, referring to Jesus. Some time ago, I was invited to address a gathering of the local humanist association. It was a strange invitation. It was not supposed to be a debate. They'd ask me to tell them about my church and the work that I do. When I finished, I received the following compliment from one of the leaders of the group. The church that Colin represents is one of the most genuine expressions of Christianity, the Christianity of the New Testament. I found that affirming, given the type of gathering I was addressing. But then came the more hostile challenge. We don't believe that Jesus even existed. Prove to us that he actually existed. I knew the historical data gathered from such ancient historians as the Roman Tacitus and the Jewish Josephus, not to mention the historical records of the Gospels themselves. But I also knew they had already rejected such testimony. 
so I opted for another statement, one that got down to the real issue. Truth, I said, is neither a philosophy nor an ideology. It's a person, and his name is Jesus. This cut through all the superficial arguments and biased points of debate. I gave them an assertion, the assertion of Jesus himself, who claimed to be Messiah, Savior, and God. But how can such a claim be verified? What was it about Jesus that made these claims credible? Many things, I suppose. The early disciples lived with Jesus. They saw his miracles and they heard his teachings. They were witnesses to all the things faithfully recorded for us in the New Testament Gospels and elsewhere. But it was one thing above everything else that convinced them. It was his resurrection from the dead. After Jesus was crucified, dead and buried, he rose again on the third day. How did they know that? He appeared to them. They saw him. They ate with him. They touched him. It was real. No hallucination. No psychological delusion, no fabricated story or legend developed over decades. Immediately, the disciples went out and proclaimed the good news. He is not dead. He is risen. My prayer is that the risen Christ would reveal himself to you. And I know that if you are really wanting to know him, he will reveal himself to you. If you've enjoyed this video, hit the like button, leave a comment, subscribe to my channel, check out the other episodes, and don't forget to share with your friends.